Welcome to our Cartney Scam and Ripoff Warning video series. Our topic today is Before You Hire a Vocal Coach. Our guest is Judy Rodman. Judy was a successful recording artist, making it all the way to number one on the Billboard Hot Country Singles Chart in 1986 with the song Until I Met You. She also won the Academy of Country Music's Top New Female Vocalist Award in 1985. Among her many songwriting credits is Leanne Rimes' smash hit One Way Ticket. She has appeared on over 2,000 recordings. Today, Judy is a producer and one of the most sought-after vocal instructors in Nashville. Hi, everybody. I'm Judy Rodman, and with over 50 years of experience in our crazy music business, <laughs> I work with voices, and I help voices be all they can be for what you need to do. Judy, can you share some ways in which vocal coaches might rip off or take advantage of their students? Yes, and I'm going to give you some, uh, some points here uh, that I ac actually am familiar with in particular, particular situations. All right, first of all, here's how vocal coaches can rip singers off. One is by claiming, that's my voice. And that rips off the, the, the student's own credit uh, for their vocal and commercial success. And also... You know, maybe they've trained with someone else. There's, there's always a village behind a successful voice. So any, any, you got to watch for that. And uh, they're also going to probably, you know, be kind of intimidating and, and possessive and all that. The second way that a vocal coach can rip an artist off is by angrily or forcefully demanding that the vocal coach not use any other vocal coach, not take any other lessons than them. And yes, I, have no ex I know of several instances where this happened. Uh, no vocal coach owns their students. No vocal coach owns their students. Uh, and they, they should only stay with that vocal coach if the training's working for them. And maybe they think, oh, I've heard about this other vocal coach. Let me try them. If that vocal coach helps them more or in a different way, more power to them. And the first vocal coach should welcome it and actually learn from the other coach. And if that vocal coach, the first vocal coach, is still the best for that student, they'll come back. Ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, okay, and then another way is by uh, using intimidation or belittling to make the student feel that they, the, the student is the reason they're not improving. And so uh, that kind of vocal coach is usually hiding their own inability to help. This rips off the student's confidence instead of building it. Another way is by teaching techniques and vocal exercises that cause the student's voice to strain. Oh my gosh, no vocal exercise should cause the student's voice to strain. And if the training does that, it's wrong. It's okay to challenge a student's voice and stretch the voice, but never to create the condition where the student's voice feels worse after the lesson than better. And of course that rips the student's uh, vocal health off. <laughs> Another way that the, uh, a vocal coach can rip a student off is if the student's voice doesn't improve or it takes too long for the student's voice to improve. You don't have to take months of breathing exercises for your voice to you know, uh, receive significant improvement from good teaching. And the truth is, it should do that at the very first lesson. So you, you know, you're gonna rip off the, the student's money and time and heart uh, if, you, if you take too long to improve their voice. Uh, another way that a vocal coach can rip a student off is by demanding the student sing genres that the student doesn't want to sing. And that's because the vocal coach only knows how to teach that genre. So uh, it's, okay to, it's okay to challenge the, the student by introducing certain genres that may stretch the imagination or stretch the student's uh, ability to sing what they didn't even think they could. But don't continue to force the student to do something that's not in their heart unless it's for a vocal exercise. All right, and another way uh, that the, a vocal coach can rip a student off is by neglecting to suggest the student seek medical help or medical uh, a, a diagnostic visit 
with a laryngologist if there are puzzling uh, issues that don't resolve. And if the vocal coach's hubris is, is, is large enough to where, well, let, let me just try some more vocal, ex, vocal lessons and we'll see if it improves, uh, that is damaging, could, potentially damaging to, to not only the student's voice, but possibly even their health, because it could be acid reflux or it could be cancer. So uh, at the first sign of something that's puzzling and that doesn't, isn't, isn't resolving after one or two lessons, maybe three at the most, the vocal student should be sent to a, a clinic where a good laryngologist can at least examine them and find out what the issues are. Then if, if there's like irritation or even a little damage, with the, the, the doctor's you know approval, then the, vo- the per- person can come back and, and do some vocal exercises to improve and correct their technique and allow the voice to self-heal. But a doctor needs to be consulted at least. This concludes our video on what to be aware of before you hire a vocal coach. We'd like to thank Judy Robin for sharing her incredible expertise and experience with us. 